Hey, what's up guys? Last project on the exterior of this build, and that is the deck back here, the second story deck. We're gonna be using some composite timber tech tongue and groove deck boards. Uh, I think it's gonna give it a great finished look. And obviously being the last project on the exterior, I'm excited to get it done and just check the exterior off the list. First thing we gotta do is get some additional framing along this edge because we're gonna have like a picture frame border going around the front and then the grooved deck boards, the tongue and groove will die directly into it. So they're running this way. Now remember this floor uh, is level with a sloped ceiling pan underneath of it. Ideal? No, not at all. However, that was made, that change was made mid build. There wasn't gonna be a ceiling underneath it. So we weren't worried about the water. Uh, clients full well and aware of the responsibility or the precaution to take. There is gonna be a screen on this uh, porch, which will cut down the amount of water that does come in. We're actually facing the south side, which doesn't see nearly the weather that the north or west sees. So we're pretty protected, um, but still we wanted to take precautions by doing that sloped ceiling metal pan underneath. So the water does make its way out by this uh, cedar beam. And then we've got a little bit of a drip edge for it to kick away from the beam. So it, you know, hopefully, can last as long as possible. But anyway, I just wanted you guys to know that. Me and Greg are gonna get started so that we can uh, get this done. So we're just doing some additional framing around this border so that the deck boards can land on something solid and we can support the, uh, I guess the border piece that's gonna go around this perimeter. So the point of the tape um, is just to prevent water from sitting on top of these, um, the framing members and doing any damage. So if it does sit here, it's not gonna be able to really do anything until it dries up. That's the, the point of this. Um, I do wish I had more of the 12 inch, that would be a lot easier, but I'm just gonna go ahead and layer it with some four inch rolls, which I've got. And just like I said, there's a big flat area where all those deck boards are gonna be joining and we don't want water just sitting here doing long-term damage. So it's always a good practice. This is gonna get old. Paper sticking. Yeah. I'm hoping it goes away because this roll had a little bit of something, something. All right, this section is ready for some decking. That's gonna be an interesting first piece. So here's a better shot at the deck. You can see we're getting it all taped off and those deck boards are gonna run out away from the house. And the ceiling underneath, if you look closely, is gapped from the actual floor joist because it's not suspended from the floor joist. It's not connected to those floor joists. It's hanging on separate framing that is putting a one inch slope on it. So any water that does make it through will make its way out to the uh, edge. And there's like a little gutter with a drip on it. So on the underside, I can show you that. Hopefully I remember. And we're gonna go ahead and finish up a little bit of details like over here. We got this little 
bit right there to do, but. Um, hey, what I need is the dimension on that, the border piece. Cause this first one, these first couple gotta get cut cause we'll never track saw them. Get a little bit of deck to work off of. Mm -hmm. All right, first thing I got to do is snap a line. Three and a half. If you don't start straight, you can't end straight. Now what we're gonna be using on this first row is a Cortex screw. We've used them on the channel before. Uh, it's a cool screw that goes in nice and into the material so that we can install a plug. And I'll show you that as we go, but these are made to color match and almost be invisible once you put them in. And what I'm gonna do now is just work my way down this board, making sure it's right on my snap line. All right, now the first piece is in. We'll go ahead and cut and install the second piece. Now today is a 70, 70 degree day, so there's still some expansion that can happen in this product, obviously. It's a PVC, this is Timber Tech, and so we're not gonna cut them. Greg, can I get the saw? Or here, 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 just cut this right here. See it? But this is a Timber Tech uh, tongue and groove. It's definitely gonna take a little bit longer than a normal deck because it's only three inches versus, let's say, a five and a half inch deck board, but I think it's gonna give it a really cool look. So we'll use those Cortex when we gotta do a when we got to do a face screw, but when we're going to be doing our tongue and groove screw to fasten the boards down, we're going to use a GRK. Um, these are two inch trim stainless steel uh, grade 305. So these are good and you definitely want to use a good fastener because obviously we're outside. GRKs are almost, I think all GRKs are made for exterior use. And what I'm going to do here is go right through the tongue and groove, or in this case, the tongue, to secure it down. And you'll feel that little pull, you know it's nice and tight. Not looking to overdrive them, just looking to suck it in nice and tight. Let's go ahead and do two more at that dimension, minimally. And what I'm doing is this is gonna be where I put my border board here. It's gonna go right around this post and cap this off and all these deck boards are gonna die in. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up track sawing this line so it's nice and straight. However, I can't get a track saw all the way. So we're gonna go ahead and run a couple. We'll get them nice and straight and then uh, that'll be our starting point. And every time we go into a post, we'll have to do the same thing. We'll have to cut a couple to size and then we'll be able to fit our track right in here. Now this right here is a good place for a Cortex because it'll screw it straight down instead of potentially sucking it tight. And then when I put one of these plugs here, I'm just gonna lose it. Okay, now we should be able to just run these tight to the wall and we'll just run them out. Actually, I'm not gonna run them like super tight. 
I should have worn knee pads on a day like today. What are you, old? I just don't have experience on my knees like you, Greg. Sorry. Yeah, this should go pretty quick. It's just small pieces is all. All right, guys, if you're still with me, we're gonna go ahead and just let this run into time lapse because it's probably pretty monotonous because that's what it is for us. It's basically mm -hmm. a whole lot of screwing. Mm -hmm. It's gonna rain. It's gonna get pretty wet here pretty soon. Yeah. We're back here on the deck getting these boards laid out. And something we did that I thought we should have probably done from the beginning is this string line. So what we did was we put a string line up end to end right on the outside of these posts because what we were doing was measuring on each side of the post and cutting the boards to length so that we could then run the track saw in between these posts and get a straight line. But I didn't think about the fact that potentially where I'm measuring on this side isn't the exact same as this side and there could be some in and out discrepancy. We put the string line up and we found maybe at the most an eighth inch discrepancy on a couple measurements. I think it's gonna be okay, but this way when I go around the column, I've got something to measure, which is just over two and three eighths. And then I can go ahead and make sure that this one is just over two and three eighths. And once I know it's good, then I can go ahead and screw it down. And hopefully that'll help us when we go put our border board on at the end. At some point I should probably measure to the end, huh? Figure out how close we are. Okay, we're 87 and an eighth. And on this end, we are 87. So we're an eighth inch off, man. Yeah, which we thought we were, remember? Okay, we can work with an eighth inch. I like to kind of go and work a couple at a time. I don't just go straight down the line. It helps lock lock the piece in and then you can come back and just fill in the ones you missed i just feel like it helps get the whole piece in before you start screwing these ones all in and it's still out a little bit over there i actually don't know if it helps at all You know you did the right depth cut, dude, when you're just barely breaking like a thin, thin line of it. That's just satisfying, man. Okay, are we ready to put these last ones in? Yeah. So we're just gonna like put them in and we won't fasten anything. Okay. And we'll get everything marked and cut. Yeah, okay. You know what sounds good right now? Mexican? Some gum. Some what? What'd you say? Gum. This is still burning enough. <gasps> <laughs> Hey, 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 take this one out. 
guy. <laughs> you really, you've really jacked this up on us here. Now get this back in there. Yeah. Why don't you just get it in that end right there? Just like stick your square in there or something, and, or your punch or a bit or something to lift that up a little. Okay. We'll be able to probably put this piece in, put this piece down, and then put sc screws in where the joists are and pull it back tight here and then finish them in. So we'll be able to have everything down except for this one and the last one. So let me just get a measurement. I don't know what I'm catching on. I need, I got another like. Wait a second though. I, get, I just gotta get under now. Yeah, but if I can't go out, maybe I'm just tight. Okay, there we go. Hey, 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 hey. So the problem we're having is we've got to get a piece underneath this last uh, this last piece underneath this trim over here and because it's tongue and groove you can't just push the boards in you've got to also get them in the tongue and groove so what I did was I cut this piece about quarter to half inch you know I just eyeballed it to be honest uh, less than what I knew it needed to be knowing that it's going to be tucked underneath this trim and hidden you're never going to see that cut that way we can push it in far enough to hopefully drop this piece in and then pull everything back tight Greg if you've got enough room, which I'd say you don't. So we're probably tied here in this corner. What if you like tripped it up that post and we slid it in? Well, I think if you just get into one tongue or groove. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Maybe go up high and then we could like bow it in. That's all we needed. Okay. So wait, 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 don't push that in, don't push that in. We know we're gonna get that, right? Okay. So now what we need to do is take that out, take this one out, finish these two. So now that we know everything is gonna work, now we're gonna go back through and make sure that these deck boards are all screwed down properly. Oh, now we could, we should be able to just fit this in and tighten it all up and screw it by using the cortex, right? Yeah, that's, the, that's the plan. Now, come my way. Yeah, ready? One, two, three. Yeah. All right, man. Easy claps. Yeah, we just got to get it tight, which I think. If you, get, if you get a screw here, I'll pull this guy, pull that guy. What do you think? I don't think that's bad at all. Now, because I don't feel like cutting down my 10 foot track to fit in between these posts, what I'm doing is just taking my Stabila, putting it right where my pre-cut ones already are, like so. And then I'm just gonna run this track right to it. And that should be right where I want to run this track. Let's just see. Looks beautiful. You know you did a good job with the track saw. When you're pulling these out, and you didn't even cut through your tape.
All right, now that we've got this all cut, we'll clean it up and then we'll prep to lay down our border board or our picture frame board or whatever you want to call it. So that's the edge. And we're going to go two and a half, two and three eighths. I'll remember that, right? That was two and a half. This two and three eighths. Good thing we don't have to worry about that. Two and three eighths. Okay. Bring it in and then go up on the roof right there. Oh. Okay. All right. This will take me a little bit of time if you want to do your thing. And when I get all these cut out, I'll give you a holler. What the heck are you up to, man? Working on this tower. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've not had it since yesterday. What uh, What'd you find? Anything? Yeah, I just broke a pole. I had to come down and make sure the line was all right. Oh, uh, how's it going? Good, good. You know that rain guard you got going on up the side? We had a gable trim. That's got all smashed, right? And then gutters got to be redone, right? Just the end, yeah. Yeah. It was that one dang tree, wasn't it? Yeah, that one that was, wasn't the close one. No? The one that was way back. No kidding. The very top of the tree just barely caught it. Right. That was good seeing you. One thing that I do, especially when making a cut like this, it's going to go around here just so it has less uh, chance of expanding into the column. I make sure I make a nice angled cut so it gives it as much room as possible. I don't know if it really matters, but I figured it, it can't hurt to do that. I'm not looking for you know any structure right there if I take away some of that material. That ended up being five shakes of a lamb's tail, bro. That was that. Yeah, actually, it, it, just, it was a long fish, not gonna lie. Everything gonna be all right. <laughs> Cool thing is about the Cortex, they come with this bit, and the bit has a soft, like spongy thing on the end, so you can just overdrive until it bottoms out, and then that way you know that you're deep enough for the Cortex plug to fit in there. Thanks, big dog. What a great feeling getting this deck finally done. We used the Timber Tech Dark Hickory 
Uh, this is the tongue and groove porch board. So it's got that old, you know, old house feel. It's got that nice, you know, small plank. Uh, so it's just a really good look, I think. Definitely being out here in a cabin uh, in the middle of the woods, I think it fits very well. And the beauty is it's gonna be super durable, maintenance free, or I should say low maintenance. Nothing is maintenance free. It's gonna not let any dirt and stuff in through the deck because of that nice tongue and groove. This is gonna all be screened in eventually, so that'll even protect it more uh, from all the weather. And we gotta obviously still get our handrail up. That's gonna be a black aluminum rail, which I think will complement the building really nicely. And you know what? I think it's just nice. It feels good. It feels solid. Uh, we worked up here, no scratches, nothing. Very durable and overall, I would say, very happy with this line from TimberTech and I would definitely push this again for a customer to use. Um, and this style, it went together pretty quick. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up and get out of here. It's another thing to check off the list.